Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another uh, tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be about this guy here called the magnetic compass. Um, the, the magnetic compass is one of the first instruments to be installed in an airplane, and it's still the only direction seeking instrument in many airplanes. If you understand its limitations, the magnetic compass is basically it's a reliable source of uh, heading indications. Now, we do have the heading indicator here, but there's a gyroscope in it, so it's got a preset, precess or slide uh, every so often, so we have to periodically cross-check it with the magnetic compass. So again, uh, we have to think about its limitations. So basically, inside this compass is a bar magnet like this, and the bar magnet has a north and south pole and basically what it does is it, it aligns itself with the electromagnetic flux lines of the earth so um, the earth has a magnetic field just like that magnet has a magnetic field and the bar magnet inside this compass constantly tries to align itself with the electro with the earth's magnetic field so that's why we um, have to understand some limitations that are associated with this magnetic compass so when you think about it the earth is basically just a huge magnet spinning in space surrounded by a magnetic field made up of, of invisible lines of flux these lines leave the surface at the magnetic north pole and re-enter at the magnetic south pole. These lines of magnetic flux have two important characteristics. Any magnet that is uh, free to rotate will align with them. So this bar magnet that's inside this instrument is free to just kind of swing around and align itself with the, the magnetic or the flux lines of the earth. The magnetic compass, like I said before, is one of the oldest and simplest instruments for indicating direction. Um, it's also one of the basic instruments that are required by Part 91 uh, of the Code of Federal Regulations, or what some might refer to as FAA regulations. Um, so as we look at this magnetic compass up here, it's basically in a bowl and it's probably kerosene in there um, and actually uh, it's sealed inside it's 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 attached to a metal float sealed inside a bowl of clear compass fluid that's similar to kerosene and um, let me see here if I can get us a really nice uh, let's see Aircraft magnetic compass. Let's see if we can't get an image for that. Okay, so basically you'll see how it's calibrated. You'll have short and long lines, and this is pretty much what this will look like. And there's a compass card here like this. You can't really see it. We'll talk about that in a minute. So this is what we call a graduated scale. All right. Um, and it's called a card, and it's wrapped around a float and viewed through the glass window here. Um, and it has a lever line. This is would be the lever line that's across it. So wherever this lies is pretty much your heading. All right. Uh, the card is marked with letters representing north, south, east, and west, and we can see west there. So this is basically a, rep a representation of what we're looking at. Let's get this thing rolling. And I'm not sure how well you guys can see this, and that's why I kind of pulled this up so you can have an idea what this looks like close up.
So all the cardinal directions are pretty much in here. Zero degrees or 360, 0, 060, zero, zero, 090 zero, or east, 120, 150, 180 is south, 2102, you just add a zero to these numbers as you look at them. So you can see 240, 210, 270, and 300. So we basically add a zero for a heading to find out um, what our compass heading is. We have long and short lines, or what we call graduation marks between the letters and numbers. Each long line represents 10 degrees. So 240, 250, 260, 270, 280, 290, 300, as we look at it there. The short lines represent five degree marks. The float and card assembly has a hard and still pivot in its center and it rides inside a special spring-loaded hard glass jewel cup. The buoyancy of the float takes most of the weight off the pivot and the fluent damps the oscillations of the float and card. So this jewel and pivot type mounting allows float freedom to rotate and, and tilt upward about 18 degrees. So even if we're in a climb a little bit, um, we still have um, some movement or freedom of movement. The compass housing um, is full of compass fluid and to prevent damage or leakage when the fluid expands and contracts with the temperature changes, the rear of the compass contracts with the temperature changes um, and because this case is sealed in a flexible diaphragm or with metal bellows in some compasses. So the bar magnets in here align itself with the magnetic field of the earth and the pilot reads the direction on the scale opposite the lubber line. All right, so this is like almost two, five, zero degrees. Now we got to talk about some compass induced errors. The first error I'm going to talk about is magnetic variation. Skyvector.com. So we could zoom out here and we talk about lines of magnetic variation and are marked on the chart. This is called an isogonic line, isogonic line. And it could be zero, a number zero, it could be a number in the west, and it could be a number in the east, depending on where you are located on Earth. Now, we have a memory phrase, east is least and west is best. So if we see west, we'll add one degree in this particular area to our heading to make up for the magnetic variation. Now the ma magnetic variation accounts for the difference or the angular difference between the North and the South Pole. I'm not sure how well you can see this but we have the geographic North Pole and then we have the magnetic North and South Pole and the magnetic North and South Pole basically show where the magnetic flux lines leave the North Pole and re-enter in the South. So the bar magnet in here is always trying to align itself with these magnetic flux lines. Uh, the, the Earth, although, you know, this Earth, it rotates around its geographic axis, but the uh, magnetic North is where the flux lines come in and out. Just want to make sure I hit everything in all my notes that I wanted to talk about that. The next part that we will talk about is compass deviation. All right, let's see. Compass deviation. 
In compass deviation, um, basically, let me see if I can't find a good compass card. When the aviation maintenance technician um, installs these radios and things of this nature into the airplane, these radios create an electrical disturbance. And basically, they interfere with this bar magnet trying to align itself with the, electro with the electrical or magnetic flux lines, I should say. So what the aviation maintenance technician will do is put in like a different number based on the electrical disturbances that these radios cause. So if I wanted to fly east, it might be 087 to let you know that. If you really truly want to fly east and account for the magnetic variation um, created by the radios in here, then you would have to fly 087. So this would be filled out by aviation maintenance technician. Basically what the aviation technician does, maintenance technician does, is point the aircraft in no, on known headings and turn on the radios and then they see how much disturbance um, that causes. So when they turn the radios on, this compass cart may move a little bit. We have some errors that are associated with this, and um, you have northerly and southerly turning errors. Now, normally what happens is when we make a left turn, this compass should slide. Well, I mean, let me think. Left. Okay, if we turn left, this card should turn to the left. But in the northern, if you're on a northerly heading, it will actually lag a little bit, which means it will initially move in the opposite direction. And your instructor can demonstrate this for you because you can hardly see this. But there are not northerly and, and southerly turning areas that we need to account for. Um, also, um, there's an acceleration error, we, or what we call um, ANDS, accelerate north, decelerate south. So as I accelerate, this compass is going to want to turn to the north. And as I decelerate, this compass is going to want to turn to the south. And the simulator really doesn't demonstrate it very, very well. It does the acceleration part. But I just wanted to talk about that. So as you go into your pilot handbook of aeronautical knowledge or your Jeppesen uh, private pilot manual and you read about these things, this is what this talks about. So there's a lag and a lead. Um, it lags in the north and it leads in the south, which means if I make a left to right turn, the compass will indicate the turn a little bit faster than is actually occurring. So in order to keep this aligned with a proper magnetic heading, what we have to do is make sure we're in level unaccelerated flight. Typically we'd be in a cruise when this happens. And we're in cruising when we're in cruising flight and we're really not making any turns, that is the best time to properly readjust. Now, let me see. To make the adjustment, let's zero in on this. To make the adjustment, you would look at the magnetic compass, and then you have a little knob here where you can make the proper adjustments on the heading. All right, so pretty much in level unaccelerated flight is the best time to do that. Uh, for, say, like a compass in a Cessna 152 or a heading indicator in a 152, since there is a gyro inside of here, the card is going to slide a little bit every so often, a couple degrees. So you would look up at your magnetic heading or your magnetic compass and level and accelerated flight and then you would just make the adjustment every 15 minutes or so you would check on it. Talked about, uh, now we really didn't talk about magnetic dip. Now, with magnetic dip, magnetic dip As we get higher and well, as we get ourselves positioned closest to the North Pole, 
the bar magnets will basically try to dip because notice here we're okay but when we get here the bar magnet will actually try to tilt itself down or pivot downward remember it's always trying to align itself with the magnetic flux lines of the earth so it's more pronounced or most pronounced in the northern and southern hemisphere where you get uh, very very um, or the most extreme magnetic dip Around the equatorial regions is really not too bad. So if you guys have any questions about the magnetic compass or some areas that you think I didn't cover, please leave, co leave comments below. Please like and subscribe. But in a nutshell, we described a magnetic compass, its construction. We talked about errors associated with the compass. Magnetic variation, which is the angular difference between the north and the south, or not north and south, but magnetic north and south, and geographic north and south poles. We talked about compass deviation, which is the interference of the electrical appliances inside the aircraft that will interfere with the sensing ability of the bar magnet and the magnetic compass. And we talked about magnetic dip, and we talked about... Uh, acceleration, deceleration, or it's typically referred to as acceleration error. Accelerate north, decelerate south, and we talked about the northern and southerly turning error. Now I'm going to find a simulator to show you, well it'll probably be in the instrument ground school because you're going to have to be able to learn how to make compass or time turns just in case this heading indicator or the vacuum system fails. Because if the vacuum system fails, then you're going to lose two instruments in your basic six flight instruments, which would be your attitude indicator and your heading indicator. So your suction will be out of the green, this needle will be laying this way or laying this way, and you will be getting some erroneous readings um, in the attitude indicator. That's probably like the most noticeable if we lost our vacuum system. And then, you know, this thing will be like all over the place, the heading indicator. So, I hope that gave you a better understanding about the magnetic compass. And I'll see you guys on the next video. This is Kino with stemwithkino.com. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share on your social media networks. Talk to you guys later.